ML tag with the lang attribute. Um, for English, just set the value to en. Um, you can go ahead and take, just do a quick Bing search if you're looking to set it up for any other languages. Um, that's the best, quickest, and most efficient way that I've found if I want to set my browser or my HTML language to French um, or even to, uh, I think Pirate English is also available if I'm not mistaken. Um, I might be though. It's been a while since I've, I've tried to use that for my HTML documents. So. All right, um, let's take a quick look at columns in action, right? Let's do a quick demo here. And take this full screen. All right, so notice we've got a, a three columns class. Then we also have uh, hyphenize as our class for, for anything that we want to have hyphens. We're going to take a quick, quick gander here. So we have three columns. Um, we've just set up a single div. It has two children elements inside of it, um, both paragraph elements, right, with our lorem ifs and text. And what we've done is we've applied the, the three columns class and the hyphenized class to, um, to both, or rather, to this, this div. And so note, with three columns, we get a width of, of 300 pixels for each column, right? Then we have the column count. I'm actually, I need to save, change that to MS, right, for our, our Microsoft browser. We may not even need the prefix, but I, I just realized that we're using Internet Explorer and not, uh, not Chrome. And so we set our column count to three, right, because we're making a web page with three columns. Uh, same thing with column count there. And finally, for hyphenize, what we've done is we've just set the value of hyphens, the hyphens property, to auto. Okay. Go ahead and launch that in the browser here. And there we go. We've got three columns. There's no height. So, of course, the text is going to uh, run all the way to the end there. You see our, our break right here between, uh, between our different paragraph elements. But uh, all that content has, has just fit inside of three different columns. And of course, we can change the, the width of the columns or even set the height. Um, but then, of course, we may have to worry about overflow. So what happens if we change? Let's get rid of width and just do a quick little experimentation here. All right. Whoops. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to refresh the browser. And all of a sudden, notice that all of our content is just automatically sized, right? So we just said three columns no matter how wide the browser is, which is pretty darn cool. I like it. Notice our hyphens are still there. Um, very cool stuff. Very cool stuff. All right, so let's go back to our presentation here. We're going to talk about CSS exclusions. Um, now, I had a problem with, with uh, running the demo for this earlier, so we're probably going to skip it in this presentation, but I will point you to some really helpful information um, that you can use and access um, to experiment with CSS exclusions. An exclusion is commonly referred to as a, a position float, and I probably should have bolded the, the terms position float, right? Um, it allows you to place an element in a specific location on a web page. So what, what we do is, let's say we have this, this blue rectangle right here, right? And I want to just place it smack dab in the center of my plate, of my, my web page. What, what happens then is that all of the text that, that's on the page and any other elements will wrap around it. And so you notice you have the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So we're, we're still all on the same line here with our text, but it's just simply wrapping around this blue rectangle. Um, exclusions can be created in a ton of different shapes too. They can be in circles, uh, triangles, uh, all sorts of things. Here I just picked a rectangle because I, I really like saying rectangle. Um, no, I'm just joking. I have no idea why I picked a rectangle. Probably because it was uh, the example that was given by the Microsoft Developer Network. Another plug for their site. All right. Um, you can declare an exclusion by using the wrap flow property. Featured right there. And, and it's preferred value. So um, we said both, right? Um, that makes sure that there's, there's wrap around, around each side of it, uh, each side of the element. Um, you can modify the shape using the shape outside and shape inside properties. I didn't choose to do that here in this particular example code. 
But um, it's important to note that a, an exclusion may not be supported by all browsers, so I'm still using my my uh, vendor prefixes, right? So I still use the Microsoft vendor prefix. So keep that in mind. Uh, you always want to make sure that we do everything that we can to make sure that our our, um, our web pages and our apps render properly in browsers. All right, so um, quick overview of all the properties for CSS exclusions. And, and really what I'm going to do here is just tell you to go ahead and download this presentation to go ahead and review them. Um, they, they very well may be tested on the, uh, the HTML application development fundamentals exam. So it's, it's really important to, to take a good hard look at them. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and point you to that Microsoft Developer Network article on CSS exclusions. Take a look right here. There's that image that I pulled from. But you can go ahead and read much, much more about the exclusion element. Um, pretty, pretty fun stuff, pretty interesting, and definitely a really neat feature to add to your user interface. So uh, check that out. That's all we've got for this module. Um, quick recap, you've learned about CSS regions. We've learned about how to implement columns and hyphenation. And also, we talked about CSS exclusions. Um, hope to see you guys again for our next module real soon. And, uh, you know, keep learning. All right, welcome back. I'm Cullen. We're going to go ahead and keep on going through our, our fantastic HTML5 voyage here. Um, we're coming back with Module 7 of HTML5 Application Development Fundamentals. And uh, that means that we're going to review how to manage a graphical interface using CSS. Um, more specifically, we're going to check out how to implement graphic effects and also look at 2D and 3D transformations, which are super fun. And I do mean super. All right, so some new effects in CSS3. Um, you can now round corners on objects, which is exciting, right? Um, you can make things transparent with ease. This is 50% transparent over here. Um, you can also give things shadows, um, like this lovely rectangle here. And then uh, you can also animate objects as well, right? Like um, this circle. I thought I'd throw a circle in there for, for good measure. Just like that, right? Make them bounce out of here. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started and talk about how to implement these graphic effects. Um, you can create rounded corners with uh, just a couple of, of properties, actually one property more specifically. Um, but you can also, also modify and round individual corners. So you use the border radius property along with the length value such as pixels, M's, or a percentage. And the higher that, that pixel value is, the more rounded the corners will appear. Okay? Um, keep in mind that some browsers are, are going to have problems with rendering a percentage value, so it's probably a better idea to stick with pixels and M's um, when, when placing units in there. Um, like I mentioned, you can also go ahead and, uh, and round individual corners with with the, the border top left radius property and border top right, border bottom right, and then border bottom left. Um, let's go ahead and take a quick look at how you do that in Web Matrix. Okay. So, um, real quickly here, just got some basic code. I'm going to drop this guy down and show a little bit more code on my screen. Probably should have done that earlier, huh? Um, oh, wow, the things you forget when you get old. Um, so, here, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and identify a block. This guy right here is the div. It's block one. Um, we've got hello world, I am a block. Um, we're actually going to use this code to, to show you how to round borders. And we're also going to go ahead and show you how to use gradients too, but that comes in just a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change the class here to my rounded class. I'm going to save my file, and let's take a look at the CSS real quickly. Um, note that the border radius here set just as in our example of 20 pixels, 20 pixels, 20 pixels, 20 pixels. I gave it a shadow, and I'm actually, I'm not going to let you guys see that shadow yet. That's not fair. I'm going to comment that out. Um, and then, of course, the background of this, this uh, square, or this block, is going to be yellow. Okay, so let's, uh, let's launch it in the browser. And there it is. Uh-oh. 
Got a little bit of a, a rendering problem there. Our text is sticking outside of, of our um, outside of our block. And actually, I can go ahead and fix that real quickly here. Um, I'm going to add some padding. We talked about that a little bit earlier when we reviewed the CSS box model. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add, let's do 15 pixels and see what that, that does for us, OK? Um, let's go back to our browser. Whoops. All right, let's go ahead and refresh the page and see what happens. And there we go. We fixed our problem, right? Hello world, I am a block is no longer cut off by our awesome rounded corners. So pretty easy stuff, right? Um, I know you've been probably adding rounded corners to your shapes in uh, PowerPoint for years. And now CSS finally allows you to catch up in your web documents a little bit more easily as well, right? Um, all right, so let's talk about creating shadows. So let's uh, go back to this slide right here, right? Our friend with the shadow, that's what we're going to do. It may not look exactly like that, but gosh darn it, we're going to try. All right, so you can add drop shadows to elements using the box shadow property. A drop shadow is, is just a visual effect that makes an object appear like it's floating, sort of like light is shining on the object, um, and then providing a shadow in the background, right? Um, there are six different attributes that can be modified when using the box shadow property, and those are H shadow, which is your horizontal uh, positioning of the shadow, or how far off, um, how far off from the shape itself the shadow is horizontally. Um, the, the vertical shadow, which is how far off the shadow is vertically from the shape. Then you have your blur level, your spread, and then your color. Um, and then finally you have inset as well. Um, today we're going to go ahead and show you uh, just a shadow, vert, V shadow, blur, and then color as well. Okay. All right. Um, real quick overview of each of those different attributes. Give you a couple of seconds to take a look at that. Don't forget that you can download these slides as well and go ahead and review these. Quick Bing search never hurts to just search for box shadow attributes, uh, CSS. All right. Let's um, let's go ahead and demo that shadow now. I'll finally go back and uh, uncomment the box shadow. Let's add a, a beautiful shadow to our, our lovely rounded block here. Okay, so all I did was I've got the box shadow, box shadow property, I've added that to the rounded class, right, to the selector. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and, uh, and offset it horizontally by 10 pixels, vertically by 10 pixels, blur it by 8 pixels, and then go ahead and uh, use the, uh, the 808080 hexadecimal code. Um, and that should give me some variant of gray. Of course, we'll see. If I'm wrong, don't hold it against me. So I'm going to refresh here. And there it is. Pretty cool. So now what happens if I make these these uh, H shadow values negative? I'm going to go ahead and save my file. I always kind of just wonder things, right? And no better way to learn than to experiment. Here I've got, uh, I'm going to exit out of these old windows. Still have to refresh. And if I do that, notice what happens, right? The orientation, or, or rather the positioning of the shadow changes. Um, the placement of the shape on the page does not, though. Really, really important to, to make sure that uh, you remember that, okay? But go and experiment with these values. Have some fun. Get wild with shadows. I don't even know if that's really possible. Anyway, let's talk about applying transparency now. Right. Um, in addition.